Hello, everybody. Yay. Well, everybody have a seat. Welcome to the White House. I love astronomy night. And we've got a very clear night to enjoy astronomy night. Uh, this is some of the most fun that I have on this job. Uh, they never let me tinker with the telescopes. Uh, they don't let me hold the moon rocks when you guys aren't around. Uh, you know, Michelle is dying to know how they grow lettuce on the International Space Station. Uh, but, uh, but when you guys come, I get to have some fun. And we've got some space buffs here tonight. Uh, we have uh, a number of members of Congress, including former astronaut Senator Bill Nelson from the great state of Florida. My science advisor, John Holdren, is here. Where is he? John, there he is. See, John's a superstar in this crowd. The head of NASA, Charlie Bolden, along with 11 of his fellow astronauts. Mae Jameson, the first African-American woman in space, is here. We've got Bill Nye, the science guy. We've got the Mythbusters in the house. But the most important thing we have here, uh, in addition to this guy, uh, is the young people who are here. Uh, young people from across the country who are already focused on some of the greatest mysteries of the universe. Uh, and I'm going to begin with a quick story. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, actually it was in Brooklyn, a 14-year-old asked his parents, what are the stars? His parents replied, they're lights in the sky, kid. Uh, the answer did not satisfy that young man, so he set out to answer his endless questions about the stars and the planets and the possibilities of extraterrestrial life. And Carl Sagan grew up to become an astronomer who enlarged this country's imagination and sense of wonder about the depths of outer space. We've got some young Americans here tonight with that same kind of adventurous spirit. Uh, when Pranav uh, Sivakumar was six years old, he found an encyclopedia about famous scientists lying around the house. At least he thinks it was lying around there. Actually, his parents probably were setting it out, <laughs> hoping he was going to run into it. Uh, and he's been fascinated with outer, uh, outer space ever since. For years, every Saturday morning, his parents drove him an hour to an astrophysics lab for Ask a Scientist class. And before long, he teamed up with researchers he met there to study gravitational lensing of quasars. <laughs> that is not what I was thinking about at his age. Uh, Pravnav was a global finalist in the Google Science Fair, not once, but twice. So you know he's going to do some important things. Give him a big round of applause. <laughs> With the help from their coaches, the RCS Rocketry Champions of Russellville, Alabama. Where are you? You're back there? There you go. Stand up, guys. They built a rocket that flies eggs, well, at least one egg, nearly 1,000 feet into the air and returns to the Earth unbroken in under a minute. They beat hundreds of other teams to take first place in the America and International Rocketry Challenges. We are very proud of you, gentlemen and ladies. Great job. From the time she was young, Phoebe Kinzelman spent nights like tonight on her grandfather's driveway staring at the stars through his telescope. She spent a summer at space camp at NASA's Johnson Space Center, and her dream is to become an astronaut. I think she speaks for many of us when she says that one of her favorite Instagram accounts is Scott Kelly's. Space is a humbling thing, Phoebe says. Uh, you can't get too eager to rule the entire universe, but Phoebe's on her way. Uh, where's Phoebe? Okay, stand up, Phoebe, so everybody can give you a big round of applause. And where's Pradnav? Because I was talking about him and I, I didn't 
There you go. Give Pradnam a big round of applause. So these are examples of the extraordinary young people that we have here today. Uh, Phoebe's given pretty wise advice uh, for a 17-year-old. Um, young people like Phoebe should encourage all of us to help our young people set their sights as high as they want. We need teachers to light a spark of curiosity in young minds, and we've got some outstanding teachers here today. We need parents to leave encyclopedias of famous scientists lying around the house. Uh, or help turn a bedroom into an ideas laboratory. Uh, we need to inspire more young people to ask about the stars and begin that lifetime quest to become the next great scientist or inventor or engineer or astronaut. And we have to watch for and cultivate and encourage those glimmers of curiosity and possibility, not suppress them, not squelch them, uh, because not only are the young people's futures at stake, but our own is at stake. You know, that's one of the reasons that my administration's worked so hard to encourage kids to enter STEM fields, especially young women who are too often underrepresented in these fields. We're halfway <laughs> we are halfway to my goal of training 100,000 new STEM teachers by the end of the decade. We're on track to connect 99% of our students to high-speed internet before the end of the decade. And over the past six years, our Educate to Innovate campaign has raised $1 billion to support STEM programs nationwide, including 80 other astronomy nights happening right now all across the country. So tonight, I'm proud to announce new com commitments by cities and organizations all over the country to expose even more students and their parents to STEM education. Uh, Bayer is launching a national effort to help 100,000 American parents and children work on science and engineering projects together. More than 300 foundations, museums, libraries, and schools across the country are partnering to bring hands-on science programming to students who don't have it. Eight observatories in Hawaii will offer all the residents of that state free guided tours. Uh, they didn't do that when I was in high school. Wish we had thought that up earlier. And, but these are just a few examples of the work that's being done all across the country, and I hope that more are going to follow the leads of uh, these outstanding organizations, because that's how we're going to make sure our next generation of explorers uh, take us even farther than uh, we're going today. You know, a few hours ago, I got a chance to talk to the astronauts up on the International Space Station, where Scott Kelly is living for an entire year. Last month, NASA found water flowing on Mars, Earlier this year, we mapped Pluto in high resolution. In recent years, we've discovered the first Earth-sized planet orbiting a star in a distant galaxy. And we've even slipped the outermost grasp of our solar system with Voyager 1, the first human-made object to venture into interstellar space. In 2017, with the help of American space companies, our astronauts will once again launch to space directly from American soil. And today, NASA is developing the capabilities to send humans to Mars in the 2030s. That, that means that some of the young people who are here tonight might be working on that project. Some of you might be on your way to Mars. America can do anything. We just got to keep on encouraging every new generation to explore and invent and create and discover. We've got to keep encouraging some young kid in Brooklyn or a budding rocket scientist in Alabama or that young girl who's dreaming to become an astronaut. Because as long as young people, like so many of you who are here tonight, keep seeking answers to the great questions, America can do anything, which is why I'm so excited to have you all tonight. You know, you make me feel hopeful about our future, because I know that you're not satisfied with being home to the last great discovery. You want to be home to the next great discovery. And you know, when I look out in the faces of these young people, I am absolutely confident that uh, there are new frontiers that we're going to be busting through uh, in my lifetime and beyond. So thank you for that. You make me excited and you make me inspired. So enough talk. Let's have some fun with this telescope. It looks pretty big.
My understanding is, is that we've got another young lady, Sophie. To the, we need you to come up here and help me with this telescope because I don't know what I'm doing. Where are you? Where are you? Save me. Here we go. Okay. I don't want to break it. How are you? I'm good. I'm very proud of you. Let's grab a mic here. Okay. All right. Introduce yourself. Okay. Hello. I'm Sophie Alvarez, and I'm a student at Brooklyn International High School, and I'm from Paraguay. Well, it's great to see you, Sophie. So, the uh, what 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 are we going to do with this big telescope here? Well, we're going to see the moon. Oh well, let's do that. Okay. The so, uh, I, I I see it there, but you, yeah. You think I'm, I'm going to get a better better view through this uh, this this big telescope? Probably. You think so? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, is it already set up for me? Oh yes. Yeah. So I just wanted to tell you more about it. Please how it do. Works. Yeah. It's, so these are reflective reflective telescope so it has three parts there are two mirrors okay and one of them right now is capturing the light of the moon and then mm -hmm. the other mirror is just making it focus and then there is an eyepiece lens which right now is um making it uh magnifying the, the image of the moon and that's why and that's how you're going to be able to see the moon like it's right in front of you so do you okay wanna, do you should i try just it? go ahead and try it yes okay oh, yes does it matter which eye it's the one you see the best with. <laughs> All right. Wow. So right now, what you're seeing is um, they're the black smooth parts, the dark smooth parts. They're called uh, Maria's, uh, Maria or seas, and they're lava flows. And they're in the craters. They are um, the result of heavy bombardment uh, with other, uh, with other um, gigantic s space stuff. With the moon. S is space stuff a uh, scientific term? Uh, yes, I think <laughs> so. <laughs> Can I just say this looks spectacular? It does. The, uh, you guys are going to get a chance to see through this, but uh, as, as good as it looks up there, it sure looks better here. <laughs> now, the interesting thing is the, ima the image is inverted. It is? Yeah, it is. <laughs> see... Uh, if you look up, yes. the right side, mm -hmm. my right side, is lit up. But if you look through the telescope, it's the left side that's lit up. Well, it has a mirror. It's a reflective one. So I, guess that's just, what I was just trying to make a point. Yes, yes. About optics. <laughs> well, this is spectacular. So, Sophie, what, what, uh, what year are you in school? What year are you in school? What I'm grade? I'm a senior. High You're school. a senior. Yeah. So what do you want to do next year? Well, I want to follow um, photography. Uh huh. I'm also interested in Korean studies, yeah. and I also like to astronomy. So I wanna do something with those three. Wow. If possible, if possible. Uh, it, uh, yeah. Anything's possible with you. Yeah. you. You're a spectacular young lady. G Thank give you. Sophie a big round of applause. Thank you. All right, everybody, uh, we are setting you loose. We've got some incredible exhibits all over the place, not just this telescope, but I know that we've got a mini planetarium and virtual reality and real reality. and <laughs> So there's all kinds of good stuff. I hope you guys have a wonderful time tonight, and uh, uh, I hope that all of you are inspired uh, the way I am by, uh, by science and, and, and by space. All right. Thank you, everybody. Great job.